all right. So good morning to you, Joanna, uh, for me. Yeah, I think it's a uh, late afternoon for you. Yes. So this is our first, um, video recording interview. I'm Becky Buckman. I'm a certified eutaptics faster EFT advanced practitioner and Joanna McGregor who's in Scotland. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee. Joanna's in Scotland and she and I are going to do um, some question and answer, maybe some tap and chat. Um, uh, just a little bit. I want to say Joanna and I met in October in Athens, Greece of 2017 at a training. And Joanna was experiencing or had been experienced, which we'll go into more about food issues and not being able to eat so many different things because of sensitivities. And you'll explain more of that. But she's also a faster EFT practitioner. And I got to see Joanna again um, in May a few months ago and her story is completely different as far as her food so um really wanted to get more of that shared and how to help our clients especially in this area around food and sensitivities and how emotions play such an a huge part of that so Joanna, introduce yourself a little bit, and then we'll get started with some questions that I have from a client who seems to be experiencing what you have experienced. Yeah. Um, well, as you just said, my name is Joanna McGregor. I am from Scotland, and I am a faster EFT practitioner, and I'm also studying the eutaptics as well. Um, and met you in Greece and um, my life has changed a lot since last October um, and I'm so excited to be doing this so I'd like to get started it's so yeah. exciting <laughs> yeah, I know I thought uh, that was such a great idea when we sort of did what I call a pop-up video um, in in Athens a few months ago uh, to sh to just uh, it, it give an example of how much can change in just a what six months i think of of focused tapping yeah. um that that there i i believe there are other ways for us to make changes and transformations in our lives and and many people do it with meditation and and, and other ways yeah however i found this is the fastest way that tapping with faster EFT getting to memories yeah. and what even not even a specific memory but just a knowing and rewriting those rewiring that so that our subconscious mind has a different what I call a Wikipedia that we all have our personal Wikipedia yeah we were all homeschooled <laughs> because we took on so much yeah as soon as we were born, those yeah. agreements. Yeah. So, so let's get to the food issues um, and how you made those changes. So I have some questions that one of my clients um, had submitted. And so I'm just gonna ask them to use just a handful of questions yeah. and, and your experience of that. So, yeah. um, so number one, how did you know to avoid foods that that you were beginning to avoid did you have a physical reaction if so what was that re reaction or did you have medical testing for allergies and it was showing that you had viruses or imbalances or something like that okay um so first of all yeah i did notice that i did have reactions to food certain foods and I used to get like an Indian takeaway. I don't know if you do have these in America, but like, um, you know, curries and the really like hot curries, like full of chili and turmeric and oh. garlic, and, mm -hmm. you know, all these things that are really good for you. Um, and they can be quite detoxifying foods as well. Um, but of course, I didn't know all this at the time. This is maybe 10 years ago when I first noticed it. So I'd have this, would be a little treat on a Saturday night. And then on a Sunday, 
I was just like knocked out. You know, I was like, I, I thought I always felt worse on a Sunday. Couldn't work this out, you know. And then I started to link this to the food because I was eating different food on the Saturday night. But I did. I, I felt ill pretty much all the time, you know, at that time. But on the Sunday, it was a lot worse. And so that began my quest of um, learning about foods, um, different food groups and all the rest of it. Um, so that was how I noticed um, the re first noticed the reaction to different foods. Um, and then what, what else was it? it was a, did I get testing? Did you have medical testing that showed any kind of viruses or imbalances or anything like yeah. that? Um, so what I did was, um, I'm trying to think, this was over a, quite a few years that I was, I mean, I'm sure I could have been a nutritionist by the end of it, the amount I studied about food. <laughs> <laughs> I knew everything. I knew all the food groups, you know, what they could do to you and what all, you know, exactly how long before you would react. It was like 20 minutes, you know, which of course I did because I learned it so well. Um, but... I did start, I did go to the doctor and this was before I got involved in any tapping, any fast right. food. I was trying on anything at all, you know, acupuncture and just anything. Um, and I did get some well, blood testing from the doctor. Like I would go and get like lots of blood tests. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I waited a long time to get an appointment at like a real specialist department in the hospital. And um, it was like this specialist doctor. And when I got there, I had to wait like two hours to see her. And um, this, the, and the waiting room was like packed of people, you know, full waiting to see this one woman. And uh, eventually when I got to see her, she looked at my notes and everything. And um, she printed out this, uh, like an elimination diet, which, uh -huh. yeah. and I looked at the it. The list, the list yeah. of things you can't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was supposed to cure me. And this brilliant woman who, who, you know, I mean, I'm sure she was very good at her job and everything. Um, anyway, she so she printed this out and she handed me this diet. And I looked at it and I thought, I tried that maybe about a year ago, you know, myself. And I thought, I'm not going to say anything because, you know, there is, if this is the best, the national health, you know, for me in Scotland, well, I've got to do something myself. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, is that it? Um, she said, make an appointment for six months' time. I went, okay. Um, I left and I walked, I, I ripped it up, I put it in the bucket, I walked past the reception desk, I did not make an appointment, and I thought, I've got to do something myself. <laughs> you know? Right. So, um, it, yeah. It, it's, it sounds like what... Uh, she gave you or her advice to you or her, her medical opinion was yes. something you had already tried yes. and, and it wasn't going to work a second time around if it didn't work the first time. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah. I want to make it clear again that we're not bashing doctors. No, no. We're not um, saying, you know, don't have tests done. Don't have any of that done. I mean, you have to, follow uh -huh. your own guidance and it and and for you your guidance had already tried what this had become and it and and I think it's um not allowing the medical field to become the authority yeah. on our own inner guidance in our bodies and it happens not just with food but with yeah so much yeah. Okay. yeah. So a little disclaimer there. We're not telling you don't see yeah. doctors. Yeah, no, no, definitely. And specialists, right. Um, uh, so the second uh, thing she had mm -hmm. asked, my client had asked, mm -hmm. was how long had you been avoiding those foods? I think yeah. before you actually got into tapping. Um, probably maybe seven years, seven, eight years, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, probably. I mean, and yeah, I did get, I, I just, um, I just gradually cut my food out, more and more foods out until, I think at one point I was eating just cabbage and turkey. Um, and then I'm, I probably decided uh, something like, 
oh, there's hormones injected into the turkey and antibiotics, so I can't have that. Um, I mean, I could even eat certain meats from different stores and I could tell if one had more antibiotics in it than another. Wow. You know, yeah, I was that sensitive. And then I just, you know, my, my diet was really limited. And for years, uh, I would only drink water, you know. Yeah. Nothing. Well, even when I met you just in October, you were you were very limited. The, yeah. I think the one meal that I remember you, you joining the group on, just studying that menu and studying the menu and like, because you were sitting next to me and you were like, with this menu, it's like, do you think the tuna is okay? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, we're in Greece. I don't, you know, I don't know. It's probably pretty fresh. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably thinking, well, it's tuna. <laughs> it's tuna and, and salad, you know, yeah. lots of cucumbers and tomatoes in Greece for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So how does faster EFT bring about changes when you've had tests showing physical damage, which I'm sure my client has had, mm -hmm. like to the gut, mm -hmm. or a real physical problem. She said, I'm trying to wrap my mind around fixing an emotional, fixing how an emotional issue can cause a physical change to result in healing. Right. Can I just, I just want to say something I forgot to say. Um, the, the, when I was talking about the testing. Oh, um, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, I just remembered. Um, I'm just writing what you asked me there down because I'll probably forget. Um, I didn't get the, like, you know, the, the allergy testing or the food intolerance testing. If I remember correctly, through all my studying of foods and tests and stuff, um, I think the food intolerance, it's like, they measure it by how long you react and there's certain symptoms and I decided that they matched me so I was intolerant to food that's what I decided and the reason I didn't push for all these tests was because to me it was not going to change my problem mm. you know just if I had a diagnosis or if I had a label for it I thought that's not I've still got this you know it's not going to make any difference whether right. I get the re, here's the report yeah it, what does it say you know? yeah. yeah 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 so I just wanted to well I remembered um so faster EFT um so what well <laughs> my mind is a bit different because I've got, I had no memories to work on um, but when I started, I started off with a home study course and when I started doing swaps because we would do swaps with other practitioners and work on each other right. and uh, to begin with nothing was changing for me and, um, and then one practitioner asked me a question which sparked a little thought inside me that perhaps this is what could maybe have happened to me. And um, then I realized that, you know, I had to do this work. Um, so I started working on memories, which I, I, like you mentioned, a knowing, you know, a knowing that something's there. And um, tapping on uh, uh, how I would have felt, how I felt about it, and then changing it and then rewriting the memories. Um, that's what it, it, for me it didn't work straight away because I had the added um, a bit that made it a bit more complicated because I didn't have any memories you know right. so. you didn't have a specific like visual in your mind of something that had happened yeah. or um, something that seems more uh, when we talk about memories a lot of people yeah uh, are looking for something solid in their head that oh they say oh when I was six years old blah 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 or something like yeah. that yeah and as a as an advanced practitioner you know we learn to teach our clients that it's not going to be necessarily a specific thing I mean often we do have yes when I was six years old this 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 happened and they did this and they said that and yeah I felt this way but more often than not it is 
a knowing. It's just a feeling. It's just, I have this sense that when I was very small, something mm -hmm. feels mm -hmm. significant and yeah. it might be as vague as that, yeah. but trusting that, that even uh, if you guess at it, you'll be correct. Exactly. And I, and I would like to say that every single thing I guessed at from the beginning, I now know, um, because I'm very nosy. <laughs> <laughs> which is great being a practitioner I really like to get to the bottom of something <laughs> and um, so I've you know I've been going through all different paperwork and things that you know I could verify what I thought was correct and mm. what I believed happened and uh, you know every single thing I guessed has been correct right from the start mm. mm -hmm. yeah which is amazing Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Because our subconscious takes in everything all the time for the moment we're born or even before we're born, I believe. Yeah. I that, do yeah. That it's taken on yeah. anything that, that our, our mothers, while they're carrying us, exactly. if they're going through stressful times or, you know, whatever that is, that those chemicals yeah. pass through yeah. and, and affect us. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's yeah. and it's not good or bad it's just how it gets written yeah. sort of on our blueprint so to speak yeah. De uh, definitely yeah, I agree yeah. With you. but it's all changeable that's the great thing yes that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> um okay yes so great so you said that you had to start kind of tapping on just whatever you could guess at yeah yeah Okay, which leads into her um, last question here that she submitted, and then I have one more updated question. Um, yeah. Were you sickly as a child or adult, and did you have trauma? Um, I was, well, I was in hospital for a few months as a child with TB, um, but I was not, apart from that, I was not, you know, really sick a lot. Um, I had a few accidents where, which um, were all the same because I, I now know I just recreated the original one. You know, I just, it's a falling thing, banging my head. So I did that quite a few times. Um, what was the other part of it? Was I sickly or, as a child? Or? Yeah. Or, um, and did you have any trauma? Yeah. Yeah, I now know that there was abuse when I was young, which that's why I had no memory of it. Right, that was the guessing part. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. yeah. So the updated question just came through. So I'm going to actually read it off my iPad because it just came in on moments before we got on here. Um, because my client had had some, it's what I, it's, which is very common to anybody who watches this video, please know that, that this is part of healing. I think that we take two steps forward and another step back because that subconscious, uh, where our, so much of our identity is our autopilot is like, whoa, who are you? Who, who, who are you going to be without this? Yeah. That you've had? You know, this is who we, who we are. Yeah. Um, so she says, my, my biggest question at this point is, since I have suppressed emotion for so long, mm -hmm. how do I even begin to feel it so I can aim at it and tap it away? Any mm -hmm. thoughts are helpful. I think you started to. Yeah. Address yeah. That. Cause this was, um, quite a big thing for me to find the emotions, to tap on it. And also, well, as you say, you know, memories can be any way, just a knowing or just a, a sound or whatever. But uh, for me, the one that I suppressed the most uh, out of all our senses was the feeling it. Um, but I just persisted, you know, I just, um, 
like if I didn't get it one time, you know, like in the morning, say, then I would go back later on in the afternoon. And then if I didn't get it, I would still just go back because I knew that was the piece I had to get to move on to the next part. And I would just, and, and I, it was probably because I was hiding it from myself, you know, just like, you know, no, you're not, you're not going there sort of thing. Um, and eventually, you know, it would just, I would get it and it's worked every time. I just persist and just keep going for it. Mm -hmm. And would you say um, that this last six months, mm -hmm. you know, how is, is that one of the biggest differences then because you've been experiencing this, you said, I think almost 10 years yep. and finally somebody asked you a question that yes. started. Yeah. yeah. Well, you dig in deeper and deeper, but the last six months yeah. has been focused on emotion, not on the food directly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was thinking about this because I think this is what has changed things for me the most has been going to, I mean, I already had done my home study course, but you know, now I want to um, do the UTAP tech. So I started in October and uh, did the level one uh, UTAP tech live seminar. And I believe that it was after that, that I started to get changes. Yeah, the deeper changes. You've yeah. been able to help others yeah. in, in other areas in many different ways, but yeah. uh, which is a, the, the biggest um, piece of the eutaptics training is that we're required as practitioners to yeah. dig in deeper and to clean up yeah. our stuff, make our changes so that we can help others. Yeah, yes. and then um, again in um, May, because um, I was there for a month and I was being an assistant for level one, which was amazing. I loved it. And then I was doing level two. And um, um, I, I think I think listening to Robert for like five, seven days solid as well, you know, really <laughs> starts to get your unconscious. It's like everybody's going, whoa. You know? um, and then I, obviously I was trying to get out of doing the art of change again, you know, because I was on the camera. And um, in the level one, and um, Trisha came up and you know handed me a pad and a pen, you know, like you're doing the out of change questions, even though you're on the camera. I was like, okay. <laughs> and there was one question, and it just it just really opened up a whole, you know, where it all came from. And I was sitting for the rest of the afternoon away in my own little world, just working out how all this, you know, putting all these different things together. It was, Do you what, mind sharing that question? No, that's no, it's fine. What happened was one of the questions in the Art of Change is who do you know? Um, who has done this or who do you know would, would had done this before? And it put me in mind of somebody and um that just opened up where my juice actually started from. Mm -hmm. um, and it was because it was people close, not immediately close to me, but you know, that, that that's why I'd been hiding it from myself. Ah, right. But before that, um, I was already, it wasn't until, so it was fe like February. So I was there for level one in October and then February, um, when I, because when I went to Greece in May, I was already eating everything. Yes. So what happened in between time was in February, now let me think, let me get this right. Um, yeah, yeah, I was, um, I just, I was sitting waiting on somebody and, uh, you know, I have to wear glasses now and I wasn't used to doing my own food shopping. So I'm sitting bored waiting on somebody and I'm reading my packet of, uh, dried fruit which I think is really healthy you know it's got no nothing else in it and I'm just reading the ingredients just because I'm eating them you know and I'm thinking and I see the word sugar I'm sugar and I've been eating these for three months <laughs> well, you know in February and before February to me sugar was like like poison you know I thought right no, oh, it's evil. Sugar is so bad. Yes. The white devil or, yeah. 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 <laughs> and I'd been eating it for three months. And I was like, 
this can't be right, surely. So anyway, um, my unconscious was obviously attracting other foods into my life because then a couple of weeks later I was on the bus and the bus driver stopped to be early and he got out with this big bag of uh, sweets or candy, you know, as they call them in America, went around and offered everybody on the bus a sweet. And to be polite, I just took one, but I thought, I'm never going to eat that, you know, <laughs> stuck it in my pocket. <laughs> and then um, a little while later, I thought, okay, sugar, I've eaten sugar. And well, maybe I could have half of it, you know, so I started sucking on it. I thought, okay, I've not died, you know, <laughs> I've not fallen over on the ground and dead. And, you know, my stomach still feels kind of the same. Um, so, and then maybe a week later, that's quite disgusting, actually. I still had it in my pocket wrapped up and then it was a hard boiled sweet. And then I decided to eat the rest of it. So then after I ate it, I realized that there was dairy in this sweetie as well. And I hadn't even thought about that. So I thought, well, I've done sugar and I've done dairy. These were like two of my main, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I could only dream about eating these, you know. And um, so then maybe a week or so later, um, <laughs> I thought, you know, well, what the, you know, I may as well have a cake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because the only thing I've not done is uh, wheat. And then every, all of that's in a cake. So I got a cake and I'll always remember it. For the rest of my life, I got a chocolate eclair. Mm. And it was a pastry and the cream and the thick chocolate icing. Oh. <laughs> it was just heaven. Was... <laughs> and then I was still a bit tentative, you know, and I, then I just gradually started eating. Oh, well, yeah, I feel like that. And it was, it was just like learning to eat again. You know, and it was like mm -hmm. tasting all these foods again. And now I can eat anything at all and drink anything. And drink anything too, not just water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, I just kind of want to now kind of summarize that and yeah. what I've um, gotten out of this information as far as how you addressed it for yourself, that yeah. it wasn't, it, it was not about the, sp the food specifically mm, which is, no. as, as practitioners we know it's not about the food even yeah. if it's it, you're you're dieting I mean you weren't doing this to lose weight your no. food list wasn't about losing weight no. um but even in weight loss it's not about the food yeah no when we have repeated patterns in relationships it's not about the other person you know exactly. it's so um so tapping on the emotions that once you, once you uh, found, sounds like a deeper layer to go into just by using uh, some knowing or some sense that something was there. Yeah. And it turns out, yeah. Yeah, go but, ahead. But yeah, I, I was eating everything before I even found that, you know, in May. Ah. But I think in October it helped me a lot. Um, because it was the same again, the art of change questions, it was the same again. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and, it, and I didn't, I did try the odd time tapping on the food, but you know, no. Right. It was, um, did tapping on the food make any changes at all? No. But what I've found out since, um, because I've, I'm learning all the time myself as a practitioner as well, is that, my, that food um, was linked to a very traumatic event that happened, that I was there. Um, I saw somebody die, mm. and we were all sitting around the table eating just before it happened. Oh, that is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the whole environment, when a traumatic event happens, mm -hmm. even though it didn't happen to you, yeah. You were a part of the event. You experienced the event. Yeah. And that whatever meaning you give it while yeah. you're doing a thing. Yeah. Music does this too. Yeah. You know, sounds yeah. that we don't realize. Um, just real quickly, as an example, that even when, let's say maybe you all hadn't been eating, but had been listening to a certain kind of music yeah. and this person died, that the music would have been a link unconsciously so that when you heard the music, it, I don't like that music and yeah. 
or yeah. got ill because of the music or something. It's just how yeah. all this stuff and is together. Well, it's not about the music, obviously, you know, or or the yeah. food, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally fascinating. But and the, even more interesting than that is that I did not have this link um, before me. Mm -hmm. And yet, my unconscious had decided that it was safe to eat all foods. Exactly. You know? So, do you think that um, that that as you started finally uncovering some things, that that memory was able to come more to the surface? Yeah, yeah I do. I definitely do. Yeah, I think it's just like layers. You know, they come off, and and as they come off, then. Because for me, if I had experienced all of what I know now in one day, say, for example, you know, I would be, I, I would be not, you know, it wouldn't be good, I don't think. It would be too much. You know, <laughs> oh my like, God. Oh. <laughs> so, but of course, man conscious knows that, you know. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I think. Right, that it'll, it'll reveal the pieces that are, it's like, okay, to... Yeah. No. Because it doesn't judge it as good or bad. Yeah. It no. it it's just you know, I describe it as this iceberg, you know, yeah. that it's all under the surface and some of it is really deep. Those original pieces and the, all the belief system and a yeah. shift in the belief system and if the beliefs are about being safe or whatever it is, mm. then the shift in the belief system allows the different pieces to to that are already there to kind of bubble up as you know if i'm thinking of a an iceberg you know that pieces can kind of bubble up to that surface yeah definitely yeah definitely that's how that's how it's happened but i think um definitely going to the live seminars has really really made a difference for me Right, and 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 be in there and, and study it. And you actually talked about the art of change, yeah. which is um, it's it questions a list of questions and a handful of different categories yeah. that we ask ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And they're not necessarily hard questions unless we. I told somebody unless we make them hard questions. Yeah. The important yeah. thing is the first answer that comes to your mind. Yeah. And clients, when you're doing a session, you know, on your client and you go through these questions and it's fascinating. I yes. Think. Even when you said, you know, it was fairly simple question. Who else have you known yeah. that has had a similar issue? Yeah. And if somebody pops into your mind, you know, and, and all the metaphors that we experience yeah. that you know, if this problem were a person, who would it be? Yeah. First person that pops into your mind. Yeah. Those yeah. kind of things. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, and then of course the tapping, it's simple and free to tap on yourself, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and finding that, that feeling, that knowing that sense that whatever it is, even if it's just in the moment that feeling something, looking at a food or listening to a music or something like that that doesn't feel right yeah. the aim is to notice it yeah. how do you how do you how do you know it what is this feeling oh it feels you know like it's creepy or it's whatever it is and then when you tap you change to your two fingers touching your face yeah that. let it go it's safe to let it go. Sometimes I say, "Eeny, meeny, miny, mo." I know yeah. how to let this go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to remember that. <laughs> you can use it, yes. I, but <laughs> e, 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 yeah, e e n y, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I know how to let this go, <laughs> and it reminds me that that there's a part of me to to let this go. That I'm not focusing on. The thing that I've shifted my focus off that I aimed by noticing it and then I went to my fingers touching my face here 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 let it go it's safe to let it go I'll keep my eyes open so that I stay in the present and then squeeze my wrist 
peace. Sometimes I go, peace, peace, peace. Yeah. And then think of a happy thing. Yeah. Find a happy memory. Find something that gives you good feelings. Find something that I'll say makes your heart smile. Find a funny video on YouTube, but shift out and tell your body that this is where you are and it's okay to feel good. And it starts retraining on how to feel good. Yeah. Change yeah. the resources. Yeah. Exactly. And that you are safe and that the past is gone and yeah. now being rewritten. Yeah. Yeah. And then what I find as well is that, that just trusting the process because it does work. Well, you don't need to it'll work anyway, but you know, it does, it just works and then something else will pop up. And that's happens. That happens to me just about every day. I think. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, I don't know that. Okay, that happened as well. So okay, we'll tap on that. Yeah, like oh my gosh, I hadn't thought about that in such a long yeah. time. Or somebody's telling you something, and something they said, yeah. you go, oh my gosh, yeah, that kind of reminds me, you know, and make a little mental note. Yeah, I'm gonna change this. You know, it's not true anymore. Doesn't have to be true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No. I once told a client she didn't want to change a past trauma. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, it's not true anymore. It's not happening anymore. We're not lying about the past. No. But you don't have to hold it that way. Mm -hmm. I said, would you continue to get back in line to get a ticket to go see the exorcist? over and over and over again and she was like N -n no and I said that's what you're doing in your mind <laughs> that was a you're, good just, one. you're <laughs> just getting back in line to watch a horror yeah. movie yeah yeah even though it doesn't feel good you're going back and sitting in the theater and watching the horror movie over and over and over yeah again. because we don't want to experience it again so we unconsciously focus on it on it so we get more <laughs> of it <laughs> but nothing can change all that which is great <laughs> yes <laughs> well, we can go on and on and on. I think this has been an excellent grand start to some good um, question and answer, how to use faster EFT results yeah. that are experienced, that are true and, and can happen quickly. But yeah. persistence is so important. So yeah. I really, really appreciate you sitting down with me and doing this um, on your Sunday afternoon. And I look forward to doing many, many more. Yeah. Um, we'll have the, the, the Joanna and Becky show. Uh, a <laughs> tap and chat. And uh, so there'll be more to come. Great. Thank yep. you so Definitely. much, Joanna. Thank you.